Here we'll call the meeting to order. All right, great. Welcome everybody, finance committee, and uh, today we're going to be going over the budget for the town government. So um, just wanted to, we'll go through um, uh, each the departments. Um, I'm just going to take it to whoever you know, whoever I see who came in, and we'll just grab you like that. And also, um, is there any? Do you want to do the public comment now? Uh, yeah, is there anybody here for public comment? No? Okay. Okay. All right. Um, great. Uh, uh, maybe we can, Jessica, since I saw you come in first, if you don't mind. I don't mind. So I'm not sure what you guys have. Great. Do you mind coming on up so you can, just so um, it's easier for Valerie to see us all talking. It's, a bit easier gotcha. to be closer. <laughs> Thank you. So we'll start with mine before the Board of Registrars. The only real angle, oh, first I wanted to point out there was technically no change because these numbers don't reflect the 1% that was put in. Okay. So the starting point, the 58912 and the 15259, mm -hmm. that's what was passed. At the last meeting in October, so that that's not a change. Okay. Those numbers could actually be undervoted. Okay. So just to let you know that. We're so the fifty-eight uh forty fifty-eight thousand forty-one dollars. That was at May's county for okay. the one percent. So okay. you have to add the one percent quota that everybody got. So the actual number right now oh. without any change is fifty-eight nine one two. Two. Okay. So that's right now. Because that's the COLA. That's okay. the COLA. That for some reason didn't get changed on that one. All right. Thanks. And the temporary wages is, is the 15229, not the 15003. 15229? Correct. 229. Okay. And that's as of the October 17th. Okay. So just wondering about that. And okay. the only, I mean, I went up or I went down a couple hundred dollars in between my line items but the only increase that is necessary is the um, file of codification that I get done every other year so if you notice it skips years mm -hmm. and this year we got quite a bit to add in so I increased that to 3500 where oh this one the yep, yep you'll see how it skips years all right which what is this software make uh, oh. by law codification. By law. And that is the town bylaws. I, okay. my department bears all of the changes on that, regardless of who's. Mm -hmm. So we have to add bylaw class of IC zeros. Right. In 15, there was nothing. In 16, it was voted in. Okay. Last so year was nothing, so this year will be in. Bylaws. Okay, so how much am I adding so in there? So 3,500. 3,500. Is that on the wrong line here? Bylaw? So software maintenance? Nope, underneath it. Oh. Line under it. Okay. Remember, we uh, recodified all the chart of accounts, so some of these numbers are a little up and down, but so long as the bottom line totals to what it needs to do, that's, uh, that's what we're hoping for. Okay. So I kept my book binding the same. I decreased my office equipment maintenance mm -hmm. because I got a new time clock and I'm not paying $300 a year in maintenance. For that. So what is that one? The uh, went down from six to four. To four. Okay. The software maintenance mm -hmm. remains the same. But the increase of thirty five hundred for the bylaw. I decreased my choice. So the expense. software maintenance is two thousand. Correct. Okay. That's the annual yearly maintenance, and then the thirty five hundred is for all the changes. Oh. Okay. And then I decreased the tuition and meetings to 600. I still want to, I have not been 600? able to attend in the past okay. year or so, but I just want to leave something in there. Okay. Um, scheduling wise, if it allows me to go. Okay. The office supplies, the 750 remains the same. Mm -hmm. Meals and mileage stays the same. Okay. Dues decrease from 200 to 150. Because I've never gone over that amount. Okay. So basically with the 
minor deductions, but the $3,500 increase, it's going to show a difference of $2,850. Okay. And I know this isn't on anybody's mm -hmm. mind right now, but if we could get me to a step 10, that'd be awesome. <laughs> Can I ask a question? Absolutely. So uh, the board of registers, I just want to know how, who sets their salary? They get a stipend. They get a monthly stipend. Okay. So who sets that stipend? That has been around since I've been here. Okay. And it goes okay. 12 months out of the year? Correct. And so they get do they typically work 12 months? I, I used to be there, so yep. I just want to clarify. No, basically, like during the summer, we have nothing going on. Mm -hmm. They're here for all the certifications. So this is a big time of the year. They come in at least twice a week this time of the year. So it's, you know, busy some months and then nothing other months. Okay. So is there like some standard rate that somebody set that says we have to pay them whatever we pay them? They've always just gotten a monthly stipend. It's never been over now. Yeah. I think when I first, one of my first years here, I asked about making their wages hourly because I had the same concern. I'm like, well, you know, if it's a balance, then let's just make it hourly. Mm -hmm. But the way that I interpret it is that you'd have to wait till, because they're appointed for three years, mm -hmm. you'd have to wait till one appointment's up, they'd get hourly, you'd have to wait until the next year to the other appointment's up. I, did, I wanted more consistency mm -hmm. rather than some getting paid by the hour and others still getting the stipend. So do you know how other towns do it? It varies. Some registrars don't even take a stipend, mm -hmm. some I believe paid by the hour. I can put a feeler out there to my uh, yeah, I'm just curious if uh, so. How many registrars do you have? There's three plus me, so that's four. Yeah, so I was just curious, and uh, you know, would it be more beneficial? It could be beneficial towards to them if they went hourly versus right, depending on the wages. And, or if they went, and also if they went hourly, then you wouldn't have to pay them through the months that. Um, but again, like work. this time of year, like I have a couple of them that come in for like 10, 15 hours a week. Mm -hmm. So that's where you're going to get them. I mean, again, I see it balancing off. Mm -hmm. This way, it's kind of more of a you know what it is rather than an unknown. I don't personally think it would ever go over that amount, even if I switched to hourly. So I'd be more than happy to investigate that. Yeah, so I'm just curious, like, whether what other towns do. Also, do they go hourly? Is 95 within the going rate? You know, it's, you said not how long you've been here? 12 years. Okay, so 95 for 12 years. Maybe it needs to be boosted up, too. Who knows, right? You don't know. I mean, 95, I think, is more than there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would just say are really for some months. I would just like to it. see how other towns, like our size, Oh, I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to get some of them don't accept there money and no consistency. Well, it's more like election workers. Some towns are election workers. They don't volunteer their time. The only reason I ask is because we were looking at uh, elected officials and we don't pay some of them stipend. I mean, uh, fees that anymore. Actually my as well. So, so. Uh, that is the only reason I asked about that is because we started taking away from other people. Good question. So is this one that we could do as well? I mean, like I said, I can put it on our, you know, group that we have out there, mm -hmm. what everyone else does, but I can guarantee you it's going to run the gamut. Um, okay. Well, it's, if we see it in paper, it's just mm -hmm. nice enough. And if you want, have to pay by hourly, do you want to know how much they get paid? Mm -hmm. Is that type of thing? Yeah. Which is hourly versus stipend versus that. I if, that. if they get paid at all. Mm -hmm. Just sounds well, our size. Right. Yeah. Okay, I appreciate that. Thank you. No worries. But that will segue right into the registrar's one. Now, these numbers are off as well. Um, I believe they reflect last year's or FY 17, uh, 16 numbers. So, which is actually beneficial because with the increase, it won't seem as bad. <laughs> so, basically, what was, um, I'm not sure the numbers you have. It was you want 4,500? The poll workers? 4,900? No, that was last year. No. Okay. Can I see yours for a second? Sure. It's these numbers that are wrong. The voted in 18. FY18 voted. Mm -hmm. Those were wrong. Okay, so what are they? So they were. Uh, the poll workers' wages were 2,000, not 4,000. Difference. The 
printing was four thousand, not six thousand. So there was a four thousand dollar difference there. Mm -hmm. Now that fluctuates based on our, the election mm -hmm. calendar, and that's the only reason why this would go up or down so much. Mm -hmm. In addition mm -hmm. to our annual town election, we have um, or actually fiscal. So in September we have a primary. In November, a state primary. Mm -hmm. in November we have a state election. And then we're going to have our annual town election. And if there's another special mm -hmm. in between, that's an unknown. But that's why there's going to be an increase for this year. So the registrar stays the same. The poll worker wages go up to 4,500. Mm -hmm. So I guess that would be another question for mine. Do, do, do they always skip a? Not, I, this is a huge thing, and they are right in the middle. Okay. For what they make, and nine, a good, say, eighty percent of them get paid. Okay. So that jump, that line item jumps from twenty-five to forty-five. Auto mark stays the same. Printing jumps from four thousand to six thousand, and the off supplies and meals and mileage stay the same. Um, the only thing that was put in last year that was kind of put on hold is a new Bodie machine. Now the one we have is doing its job. It's not, you know, if it ain't broken, don't fix it type of thing. But I'm just afraid it's at the point where they're not. It's kind of like a car that they don't make anymore. They'll have the parts for like another 10 years, but then after that. Mm -hmm. um, so I just want to keep that kind of on the side that that might be coming up sooner than we so in 18, did you, all these fundings that were allowed for you, was all of them used right to the dollar? I think pretty close. This year was pretty darn close. Okay. How much did the voting machine cost? Roughly 65. 65. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're very fortunate. We're only one precinct mm -hmm. here in Abbey, one voting machine. Mm -hmm. And all the maintenance for the machine and all that is already included in one area. So how many viewers do you think we have? I mean, there's technically nothing wrong with it. Mm -hmm. I mean, if nothing goes wrong, we probably still use it for another couple of years. Okay. Couple of years. But That's I'm just a saying, a lot of towns are fading out of the old and bringing in the newer models. Well, isn't it's it better to replace this, before it breaks? If that petition article goes through, we're going to have to buy a voting machine that can do instant. That is, there's so. I would not jump to buy a voting machine to satisfy the rent right voting. Not considered at this point. Okay. That's what I was just going to look at to see if that was going to. Absolutely not. Oh. Um, again, I need more research to be done on the rain voting than what my research has. I'm not sure if it would work in having. I mean, ideally, it sounds great realistically. I think it's going to be, we're going to be backtracking because they're saying that they're not sure. The state at the, or the state ethics, the state elections don't. Um, comment on it. They mm -hmm. have absolutely no stance whatsoever for that, and there's a lot of debate going on. Mm -hmm. um, certain cities and towns, like you're going to hear a lot about Cambridge. Oh, they've been doing it for 40 years. Cambridge has been doing it for their city councils and their school committees only. It's not ranked for everything. And there's certain things that have to, it's going to set us back where if we don't get the equipment, we have to hand count again. Do you want to take that step backwards and do the hand counts? No. <laughs> But again, not the time for that discussion. <laughs> I mean, I'm open to listening to everything they have to say. It is a very interesting idea. And again, idealistically, or ideally, it sounds mm -hmm. good, but realistically, it might not work for everything. Okay. So with the poll workers, would there be any overlap with the veteran tax work off and the senior tax work off programs they're implementing? Like, would those candidates for those programs be looking to work as poll workers? I don't know what somebody else might be thinking about doing for work on. Is it an option? I don't think no. I think a lot of the people that we actually have working now could do it that way instead of getting a check and doing the tax work. Mm -hmm. They qualify for work. So a lot of our the average age of our election workers is you know the retirees. Mm -hmm. So absolutely. Right. So something to keep an eye on for this mm -hmm. year and look at next year. Absolutely. I'm also thinking about um, getting a few of the, because I think you have to be 17 or older to work at the pools. I know there's the Primero Society that's looking for hours, and I was thinking, you know, we could keep, take a couple of kids from the school and do that, mm -hmm. and it'd be win-win where we wouldn't have to pay to get their volunteer hours. Mm -hmm.
And another good thing is my registrar might be able to go down because I just found $886 in um, reimbursement costs when we have federal or state and federal elections. Because our polling hours are normally like 9 to 8, you know how first um, state elections we have to open at 7. The state reimburses us for those two hours. And I didn't realize that they were put in a separate account because as Joan explained, it's considered like grants or does automatically go back into my registrar's budget. So I have $886 that we can maybe take out of here because we'll use that. Okay. $886? $886.50. Or you can save it towards the new machine. Yeah. <laughs> I, want, I wanted to ask, after um, we're all set here, I wanted to ask you about the, um, maybe about uh, revenues. Do you have or see any revenues, maybe fees or anything any that we could do? I think what we, um, I changed my fee schedule in 09. Um, to bring us because I think we were under charging and um, those increases I mean I do birth certificates and you know most of the fees is a certifying and I think the ten dollars we charge now is very reasonable mm -hmm. I mean someone will come in and be like yeah, the ten dollar rate it's like okay well give me two you know or three instead of you went up with that and charged 20 you're not going to get those extra couple just to be safe type of thing mm -hmm. um, dog Licenses, I have such a hard time even getting some people to register their dogs. Mm -hmm. I think any more than the five slash ten would be too much. Now, that one with, with registering, that just comes with underneath the, um, you don't really send out regular bills, do We're you? We're not required to send out reminders, but the only mass reminder we're able to send out is with the census. Census site numbers. So we do that, and that's where it's taken a few years to kind of tweak, but it works out really well. So I already have 400 dog licenses downstairs waiting to process. So that's worked out really well. Do you our license cycles, April to April. Oh, do you get June. notified by the veterinarians or something? 90% of the vets let us know for the rabies. And new dogs that come in, people that don't register the dogs will get a notice that there is a new dog and then we send out the reminder, okay, you're required to do this. I know Kyle Dragon is one of the new dog officers. He's really on top of a lot of it as well, you know, running into people saying, okay, it's not licensed, go to the clerk's office and license it. Mm -hmm. um, as far as our business certificates, um, I can't see increasing that mm -hmm. anymore. I mean, it's $50 flat fee, um, other money. Is there any, you know, I was just not, you know, thinking not just increasing, but maybe some things are hard to get, you know, fees, and, and maybe if, we, if there was another way or automated it another way or, I don't know. But sometimes I would think it might be, you know, business certificates. How do you know if they're still in business or do you get a we report? We do every six months. We send out the reminders to all the businesses. Oh, yeah. And Jen and I have been working together on, um, she won't issue any licenses without, she. we added one line to her licensing thing and we generated probably another 25 businesses that shouldn't, that should have had it but didn't. So unfortunately, I'm not the enforcing officer in that situation, mm -hmm. so I can remind people and say, okay, if you don't do it, this might happen. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's as much as I can do on my side. Okay. Great, thank you. And uh, if, if speaking of ways to generate more income, if we could do a um, accept debit or credit cards, I think that would help a lot. So what will it take to be able to do that? I think that'd be. I, I yeah. actually do continue uh, looking into this. Our our issue is um, that we don't want if we say like, use a credit card, we want to be able to take in the full fee, and we want to find a way to pass along the. Don't expense. they offer that now? Don't a lot of the places offer that's that? How, now that's how we do it in our yeah. office. It, we have it with Unibank. Yeah, but it's that you what you add in is amount and an initial amount per bill. We don't. Well, well they added an amount per bill. But that would be going through a bank and going through an account. You, you want to swipe machine. And normally or my fees are such a drop in the bucket, you know, so right. it's not paying a $2,500 real estate right. tax or paying a $5 dollar right. tax. And it's more of a convenience. I think people could do it. I know you have the Yeah, option. if you use a debit card in my office, it costs you three ninety five. If you go online and pay by check, electronic check, mm -hmm. it's $0.25. Cents. 
Well, I think we'd get a lot of I electronic I checks. I normally say to folks, we don't recommend that you use a debit card, and the credit card fees are huge. Um, right. We had, I say we don't recommend it if if you have the ability to go online and pay with your checking account, it costs you a quarter. But, because we can't we can't lower the tax levy. But a three dollar fee on a you know thousand dollar thing is one thing. A three dollar fee on a five dollar right? Thing, you know, yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, I have people do that all the time. Like <laughs> excise bills. But I just get funny looks when people come in. I'm just like cash or check only. Yeah. Oh, please. <laughs> well, yeah, because it, and, and just being in banking, I know that. Many times when we open things, we don't even give people checks anymore. <laughs> Here's your debit card. Right. That's what the hell they get. Right. So, so you add a fee on? We they do. Pay? Okay. When they pay by debit card. Yeah. I have a swipe machine yeah. on my computer. So I will swipe their debit or credit card and uh, under Unibank's icon. I swipe it and it comes up and it says, you know, there's a $3.95 convenience fee. Continue. Okay. So it's like going And I always say to the person, there's a $3.95. Are you willing that, to continue? That goes to Unibank. It goes to Unibank, yeah. yeah it's right. like, it's like office, a merchant fee with my that, office. that stores have when people mm -hmm. use their credit cards. Right. But my office, I collect so many fees from other departments. I don't know how that would play a part in it, too. You know, like all the burial permits are for the Board of Health, all the planning fees yeah. are for planning board. Oh. So I, you know, I do the firearms for the police station. So I'm just the collecting agent, so I don't know if that would. And I don't know how, I couldn't change any of their fees without consulting them. Yeah. Um, I recently talked with the new Park and Rec's director about this too because they want a way for people to sign up online and pay. And it's, a, it's the same kind of thing. How can they do it so that it doesn't cost the town out of the fees that they're charging? Um, so I, it is something that we're exploring. And I'll, I, I, think it, I think it's an important uh, direction to go in. And we find the one that costs us right, I pay the, the least. To not have to come and Park and Rec, a number yeah. of years ago, had their own mm -hmm. Unibank right, account. Right, and it just didn't. Yeah. It's, now, it's since closed about two years ago because yeah, it wasn't important. being used. But. Yeah. But I'll do my homework on the registrars from the other towns. Oh, great. Thank size. you. Um, just want to email with that. Yeah, that'd be good. All right. Any other questions? No, not here. Thank you. Thanks, awesome. guys. Thanks, Thanks. for coming in. Do we, um, I'm thinking maybe we could go with planning board next, just because it looks like that would, might be a, a quicker one. <laughs> yep, <Yeah. laughs> great. Oh. Yeah, right here, absolutely. Thanks. Um. Next year, they gave us fifty-five hundred dollars for administrative, fifty-six for the administrative assistant to help with secretarial work. Um, I would like to increase. I didn't get it to David in time. The advertising budget by five hundred dollars. Um, that is one item that we really have no control over, except for any amendments to, to the zoning bylaws. And most of that is also reimbursed in our fees, but that the fees go into the general fund, and. Um, it pays for the advertising in a gazette, and advertise, legal advertising in a gazette has gone up significantly in the last couple of years, and that a simple ad used to cost us like $65 for two publications, now it's up to about $165. Mm -hmm. And you know, that, that's, that's part of the fee that is paid for by the developers. Other than that, um, for this year, so you charge them whatever the cost of No, we, we charge we charge a flat fee mm -hmm. based on square footage. Mm -hmm. And depending on what special permits are required, there's an additional twenty five dollars for each of the special permits, up to really no limit. For example, anything up to ten thousand square feet is three hundred twenty five dollars flat fee. Once you go over ten thousand square feet of building, then you pay an additional cost, typically because a bigger building requires more work, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And that covers basically the 
kind of different things that are done throughout Town Hall, with the exception, you know, the fire department does a quick review, police do a quick review, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it kind of gives a little bit of, takes everybody's time and pays a little bit of it mm -hmm. and spreads it out. And, um, for example, when uh, the new motel, hotel going up next to Aldi's, I think they pay about, what's the close to $15,000, $1,500, dollars because it's more square footage. So the fee was significantly higher. Mm. And so the bigger buildings do pay more. Um, we usually take in more, normally, when we're in a normal year, we'll take in more fees than our whole planning board budget is. So it, it takes, you know, that pretty much takes care of it. Um, just a quick mention on that last week, I went to this, it called it, it's called an MS4 uh, seminar. MS4 is a buzzword, for lack of a better term, that the state and the EPA are using for storm water drainage. Mm -hmm. um, the DPW has a massive amount of extra work to do under the new MS4 guidelines. Um, Mario, Marlo, I'm sorry, Marlo could probably put two people full time during the summer months and he probably wouldn't accomplish them. what he needs to get done. It is going to be that bad. He will, I'm sure he'll speak more to it. I think there's an item someplace on drain that he's going to comply with. Anyway, quick story, we went to this eight hour, seven, eight hour seminar and DPW has a massive amount of work to do. Come to turn, find out the planning board has quite a bit to do. We're revising the zoning bylaw and the general bylaw to comply with the new MS4 requirements. There'll be something hopefully at a town warrant to do that. Um, but there's also going to be additional annual work that the board has to do in paperwork and record keeping. That for some reason the state is recommending this follow to the planning board's um, expertise. And yeah, you're probably talking 30 hours a year, not something that's ridiculous. Um, we'll find out more. We're getting the Planning Valley Planning Commission to come in and give us some advice on that. More to come on what that's really going to require. So for this year, we're fine, but I think in the next year's fiscal budget, would be 2020, we'll probably need to increase the uh, planning services to possibly 10,000. Mm -hmm. That is really a fee that is paid 100% to the Priority Valley Planning Commission for consulting and helping us with rewrite of bylaws and, and investigating different zoning bylaws and stuff like that. This year, you know, I think we're, I know we're okay because I'm not gonna ask for any more. But in the 2020 budget, that will almost certainly have to increase for something. Okay, but that's been, that's been the same $7,500 now for well over 10 years, David, at least, if not more longer, maybe 12 or 15. We've been using them for that. So that's to avoid having to hire a town planner. Are you, you're saying in addition, so it'll be. So it'll, it'll be a total of 10. Oh, a total of 10. 10. A 2,500 increase. Okay. Okay. I have, I have a question, maybe you can't answer this, but that me seminar meeting that you went to, the MS4, uh, was there any talk about how many towns actually charge a fee for that stormwater runoff? Yes, I think there's a whole, they, they call it the rain fee. A rain, they call it a rain tax. That's what Northampton has instituted. They don't call it a tax, they call it a fee. I'm <laughs> telling you what the people call it. I know what they call it. Okay. They call, I they work call there, so I, I know what it is. is. But the Northampton business people call it a rain tax. And you can call it what you want. Right. It, it's a tax. It's an additional tax. It's a fee. It's an, and some people call it a, a fee. Some people call it a uh, enterprise fund. They call it different different names. It has its own enterprise fund. Okay. It's an, it's an additional fee. It's additional tax, whatever you want. And I think in the entire state, um, I believe there may be like four or five towns, and cities and towns that have instituted that. Northampton has done it, Chicopee has done it, um, and most of the other towns are in the uh, eastern part of the city. Okay. The reason I ask is because, as we know, we all know, our budget is tight every year. Yeah. Because of this MS4 yeah. thing and mentioning the DPW was going to have two workers around the phone, whatever. Minute. Yeah. So that's an increase in payroll and services, and yes. there's no funds coming in right. somewhere to offset that. One of the questions I actually I asked early on during the seminar 
is that this is another requirement of the state. Whoever is the funds to pay for this, they give us all these things. They, they basically, they came down to, which they have no money to pay, to give the town for this. There are different kind of grants you can get if you fall into certain categories. Most of the towns in Western Mass don't qualify. Mm -hmm. Okay, and a lot of the funds that are grants that are available can't be used for MS4 requirements. Mm -hmm. well, what good is the what good is the grant? If that's what you're going to try to get it done with, well, you can use it for this, you can use it for there. They're lost, awesome. but they, they they finally absolutely admitted there is no money coming from the state to do this or the federal government. It is a requirement. Um, I think Northampton charges. So they talk about different towns to do this. So they have to charge a twenty twenty dollars a residence. No, twenty dollars a lot, whether or not there's a house on it. Um, four times a year. Chicopee charges twenty five dollars per lot. If you're a business, there is a maximum fee of what do they say? Well, like six hundred and fifty dollars. So if you're a Home Depot, you pay maximum six hundred and fifty dollars. If you are something like an Esalon, you'd pay a maximum of $650. So it's a bit lopsided in that respect in that whether you are a mega big box or a little something like an Esalon or a Staples restaurant, um, you're going to pay so much per business a maximum of this much. And they base it on square foot and almost everybody pays that anyway, the way they use it. So but they, they use a comparison. The CVS will pay the same thing as a Home Depot in either town, Chicopee or uh, Northampton. They didn't talk about any fees from the eastern part of the state because there was nobody there that could talk about But there were people at the meeting from both Northampton and Chicopee, and they talked about this, uh, in, this, in, this uh, enterprise fee. Okay. Did they so in the real estate tax? No. They, they mail it in. They actually mail it as part of the real estate tax. It's a separate in the same bill. It's a, it, yes, but it's a separate bill. Yes. And it's not called a tax. It's actually called a fee, regardless of whatever you know, people say, yeah. which is fine. Um, so my question, I guess, is, is how do you think that, how, how can we resolve the increase that it's going to cost our town to um, live up to these standards that the state puts on us? Yeah. I'm not going to touch that one with a 10 foot pole. I know you're not. <laughs> 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 I have an idea um, how much that is. I believe Chicopee said they, because they're a big big city, larger city, I think they said they collect about close to a million dollars a year. Well, I mean, how much is it going to cost us to conform with the MS? Oh, Maybe that's a few years. Years. I can only tell you what Chicopee said. Chicopee said it's going to cost them about, no, they're in a different category. Chicopee has combined sewers. Mm -hmm. They need to separate their combined sewers, okay? We don't have that problem. We have a separate, by combined sewer means stormwater and sewer from your toilet goes into the same system, which goes to the sewer plant. They have a very old system. Northampton, I don't know what they have. I'm not going to comment. I can't hold it. I can't comment. But Chickabee says so far they have spent about $180 million separating their sewers. They are approximately 65% done. They think it's going to cost them another $220 million to do the other 35%. So this fee that they're charging isn't even a drop in the bucket. The MS4 for what they have to do. So, if we don't have like a separate center, what, is, what, what do we need to do further to conform? It, it, Mario can explain what better than I do, so I don't want to get into his stuff. Marlowe. Right. Marlowe. Well, I'm sorry. Marlowe. Marlowe. Mar 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 I'm sorry. You, you, I'm sorry. You, you, you that game that you play with yes, Mario. <laughs> Marlowe can explain that much better than I do. So, um, sorry. And I'm sure he, he's also much more familiar with it because yeah, he's, he's been living with it for a while trying to gather information that the state said is supposed to take effect I believe this summer is the, the first implementation date. Now there's a multi-year plan to implement this. It's not like, excuse me, on day 12 of this, inter, of this implementation you have to comply. There is multiple, first you're going to do this, second year you're going to do this, and so on. 
it's a, basically t at the end of a 10 year plan, you need to be full compliance. But the towns have known for a while that there, this was coming up. Well, this, this is, is this not, is not the first S MS4. MS4 right. was first instituted over 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. This is the next increase of MS4. MS4 basically comes down to back in the 60s, industry was polluting the rivers and everything else. The federal government says e e EPA, whatever they want to call them, you will clean up your act. They did, most of them. Now, municipalities were pretty much exempted. And about I don't know, 20 years ago, the federal government says, municipalities, you will now clean up your acts because the industries have pretty much done their part. And this is a step-by-step -step year, a multi-year plan to improve the environment and reduce pollution. And it encompasses all kinds of stuff depending where you are, combined sewers, not combined sewers. But the town of Hadley really has to do with outflows of storm water. And testing, sampling, making sure there's no pollution in it. Um, two big things out of this seminar that we came out of is the state will not allow anybody to tie into their drainage system, period. Okay, so if you've got a, a pipe running on a system down the street that the state owns it, you shall not tie into it. If the town has a pipe running down the system, the state has said, we highly recommend nobody ties into it. We can't say no, but we're saying nobody should tie into your town drainage system because of this whole thing with MS4 and pollution. It's really about reducing pollution, elim eliminating pollution for the environment, water, land, whatever you want to call it. So, so it's, can we, like, you have, say I'm coming in, I want to build a new building or something, right? Is this some kind of fee that could be um, put on or asked of the new person wanting to put a building in or, you know, like, well, so the town can offset some costs yeah. or what? Yeah didn't think of that, but if we're saying... And David wants to have us up at the yeah, same I'm sorry, I'm talking to bust in. No, that's okay. It seemed like the conversation was going on yeah. long and it yes. might help to have a little bit of background. First of all, we've raised the money for MS4 compliance. We already have $390,000 for this project set aside already. So... Part of that's for labor? <clears throat> it's for MS4 compliance, whatever the regulations are going to be. All right, MS4, the permit does not cover the entire town of Hadley. It covers the Route 9 corridor and the Lake Warner area. So in those two areas, we have multiple jurisdictions contributing stormwater. We have the Massachusetts Department of Transportation with their stormwater drains. We have the University of Massachusetts with its storm drains that feeds into Hadley. And we have the town of Amherst also feeding in, and then we have private sources of, of drainage, okay. So coming up with a fee was very much part of the scope of work that we've hired people to look at for the town of Hadley. But this is going to be a very complex matter because you have to do things fairly, and this is not going to apply for the entire town. You have to do things in such a way as that you're reaching across those jurisdictional boundaries in order to get at the sources of pollution that need to be controlled that you have no control over. So it's going to be a very tough problem to solve, but it is part of the scope of work that we envision. Right now MS4 is on hold, but that hold is, expires on July 1st, 2018, so we may be back into it right away. We have been taking the proactive steps to comply with the easy parts and best management practice parts of MS4. So should it be implemented on July 1st, then we are in a very good position to meet those first year goals. Uh, and planning board, thank you very much for taking the effort to look at the, uh, the bylaws relating to zoning as well as the general bylaws having to do with stormwater. I don't mean to beat this up, I think we beat up enough, but just, just I don't, it's kind of gotten off of the planning board budget, mm -hmm. so we can probably get back to the budget and just okay. be aware that this is coming up. Mm -hmm. And like I said, Mario is going to be able to explain more of his requirements. Marlo. Marlo. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I keep saying that? I, I come know. to your meeting and I'm going to hold up the thing. Marlo! 
I spent the whole day doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's like you were Thank you. I have a question though. Um, and if we can just quickly look at the administrative uh, assistant there, that's an increase you decided to, um, you needed someone to do the work. But I was just questioning it because one of the things with the planning board, we, we kept them separate. Oh, David's going to yeah, jump in on that. Yeah. Oh, because we, we kept them separate so we didn't take away any of the fees, I mean, the stipends and stuff like that. Right, but eventually they need somebody that's going to learn how to do all their jobs. No, that's no. not what this is. Oh, that's no. not. Yeah. No, this is just a secretary to do some typing. Yeah, so uh, the, we have we have Dee Dee who works across the hall. She's 35 hours a week. Ten of those hours are devoted to the accountant. The accountant said I only need five, so we reallocated the remaining five to the planning board. If you go to page 50 in your books, you'll see it. Uh, equal decrease in the town accountant on the south um, line item. Okay, so I have a question. I thought when we were discussing uh, insurances and um, departments um, um, for people that were getting fees, planning board was thinking about <clears throat> or talking about hiring somebody to learn the ropes Correct. Am I am I off base here that that was not a conversation? It would be an ideal thing to do, but you're looking at somebody to do that. You're looking at a blind item with benefits, probably eighty thousand dollars a year. Which is great. So we, I mean, it's a lot of money, but we want to be proactive, understanding that we're not all going to be here for the rest, you know, for a right. hundred more years. And, and, and so we're, 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 what are we doing to be proactive <clears throat> to? help your department. Yeah. We're, we're, we're a ways away from getting something like that going. Okay. This, mm -hmm. this, this secretary, we want to see how the secretary, this five hours a week helps us. How, we, you know, how, how well can we use that? And Bill and I have been talking, if we can use the person for what, what kind of things can they do that'll make sense. Mm -hmm. um, and leave it at that for right now. The best way to get to utilize that five hours a week. I, I'm sure it's needed, and I, and I like the fact that we reuse people in different spots. My only concern with this is one of the things that we said with the planning board is we made them different than everybody else because to keep them separated because you do all the work. You, you're, you're more than just the regular boards. But like, let's use the select board, for instance. They, we said, uh, took away their stipends because they had um, an employee list that works Any, for them. Anybody that had an employee, that we just said, we said, okay, if they have an employee, they got taken Our away. was another one because mm -hmm. they have a coordinator. So is this going to be a problem now because all of a sudden there's an employee that's on the books under this? What do you the, think? This, this employee can't even touch the time the bill is. Uh, and, and we agree, I agree with that. So that's why I'm saying, is this going to be a If it's a problem, you take them away. David, is this going to be, a, did you foresee this being an issue with the, you know, just the way we did all the others? This is going to be, well, 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 I don't know why I'm asking I mean, because when we, when we took, uh, me, when we took the monies away from the other departments, mm -hmm. it was based on if they had somebody, an employee working for them. I think, though, it was full-time employee versus this is very minimal. But that's also when we had the discussion that at some point the planning board needs to hire somebody. Mm -hmm. Am I right? We had that mm -hmm. conversation mm -hmm. and we need to be proactive. And that's kind of like, I think that kind of falls into the whole thing that we wanted to do with the HR and all, all that, correct? And now we're, you're saying that that's way down the road. Well, God forbid if something happens to one of you guys and we don't, I'm clueless, and many of us right. are clueless in this town. <laughs> and, and, and you know, I'm, I don't mean way down the road. I'm not. I'm not talking years and years. Mm -hmm. But um, we're not there right now to decide what we're going to do. And, and even on a budget-wise, where would they come up with the money to put some, to support? This, this is a part of yeah. the discussion that we want to add services to this town that need to be added, such as that, HR, and whatever else ones we were deciding on, correct? So that would fall under that. 
and that's why I'm saying that that's really important and that we still need to go forward with that. So, okay. but as far as the, you know, I would have to relook at, revisit the uh, tapes and listen to what was actually said right. to see if that falls under it. You know, I kind of think it was more like a full-time employee, if I'm correct. Yeah, as I recall the wording, it was doing the work of the board. I mean, doing the board's work. And this is a, a support position. It's something well, that I... Well, this person's not doing the work. They're just... Or, okay. They're so not doing the planning board work. Right. They're supporting. There are some things that, that, we, that we have spotted, and this is you're trying to track money, we have spotted over the last year or so, which are, are falling through the cracks. The, the planning board sets their decisions and says, this, this is your payment schedule. And then there's no actual, the, the, the tracking uh, of that is something that Didi would be particularly good at because she collects the building permit fees and good. all of that. So it's, yeah, it's collecting, proper, collecting right, the money and making sure they're meeting the deadlines. And, and when the planning board says we need you to do this in order to be in compliance to it, you, you know, they'll be maybe setting up checklists and make sure that everything that they've said in their opinion is being checked well, off. Maybe they need somebody more than five hours to do. Maybe they do. Well, but this was available. Know that until we start. Okay. So but what I'm saying is is that I just want nobody questioning this because of what we chose to do. Right? Yeah, please. And I think that's what you're saying. Amy. Yeah, so, right. And, and, and down the road, maybe even we read title instead of administrative assistant. We can, I like, it, you said the supporting, you know, um, it's not necessarily a full-time employee. It's, it's not someone to write the opinions. Right. It's someone to do the checklist and make sure there's some. I know. Well, right. I just want to stay consistent. We can't change the rules as we go along. We want to just, you know, what we said mm -hmm. as we go along. We want to be consistent. There's no questions that way, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I and I just brought it up because I know that we made a point of uh, pulling out the planning board um, and making them different than the others. Yes, yeah. that was one of the things that we called to attention. <laughs> okay, thank you. That's it. Thanks. Thank you. Great. Say hi, Mario. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, I don't know who would be the quickest next of who would like to come up next. I've got a couple of things here. It doesn't make a difference to me. Sure. Great. Good. Good. last year because uh, Kim, my assistant, had surgery on her foot, so neither one of us went to the annual school, so the office wasn't closed. Okay. So, but um, we were asked to um, submit a level service budget. Last year, I had added hours uh, that were cut for, uh, primarily for the quarterly billing of water and sewer, which went from semi-annual to quarterly. Um, right now, both Kim and I are budgeted for 35 hours a week. I'm putting in anywhere from 37 to 42 hours a week. Um, Is she doing the same? She's doing close. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, and it, it's just, uh, Molly had indicated that it was okay to, you know, do comp time, but we're going to run into the same thing that the treasurer's office ran into a couple of years ago, where you use your comp time, you come back, and you just build it right back up nobody's because doing nobody's work. doing the work. So um, I, I would like the two and a half hours for each of us added back in per week. It's a half an hour a day, but... Um, so that was brought on by the quarterly tax billing, you said? Mm -hmm. And did we expect an increase in revenues because we shifted it quarterly? No. I thought that we were expecting No, it that. was a 
that the collection revenue would be flow? Pure cash, flow. cash flow. Just cash flow. Mm -hmm. But other than that, pretty much everything is is the same. So, can you tell us what the two and a half hour figure would be? Do you know that? Yeah, it's what he took out. Oh, okay. And that does that include the one uh, percent increase? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I had corrected. His original figures had the original loaded. Mm -hmm. And when I did mine, I corrected it to include the COLA. Well, I personally don't want to see somebody lose hours and then add work, more work. Okay, so it's duly noted 1500 and then 4355 And the 2768 for Kim. Oh, right. They're split items. Sorry. Yep. So, David, what was your rationale for taking them out in your recommendation? It's like we have been silent on the issue of COLA, uh, so I just went with the numbers that was that. This wasn't seat. COLA. This was the additional hours right. for quarterly billing. Right. So, the solely. Slide, right. So, the select board has been silent on that issue, so I just ran with the numbers that were already there. Okay. I have no objection okay. to the uh, request. All right, great. Thank you. Great. Who's thinking next? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I like the quarterly building. Building it makes my phone not look so big. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> I'm sure you do. <laughs> All right. Treasurer salary. Um, budget. <laughs> Salaries at the top. Uh, no, no increases there. Um, so uh, the benefits coordinator, uh, assistant treasurer. We actually it was a, it was a name change last year that we really felt it was more appropriate. So if we to the position. Um, we were going to do something a bit more with it. With budget constraints. That's about as far as it got. It's really never gotten beyond. This, this so page, if the town were to buy uh, hire uh, an HR person, some of that stuff that she does would shift. That's what we are hoping. So that then that would her that true would title would be assistant treasurer. Right. Uh, I don't know what you want from your HR coordinator. Your mm -hmm. HR is a person who does a lot of personnel. And, then, mm -hmm. and if, you, if you're hiring someone for full time, mm -hmm. maybe they would handle all of the personnel issues and all of the benefits issues. Mm -hmm. If you're looking and you get and have someone part time, they're probably our greatest need, as in it's not being filled um, as well as any of us would like right now, um, would be for the personnel side of it. Don't you well, think? HR, we were having a conversation this uh, this afternoon with uh, the National Council. Uh, and we were talking about the scope of work of HR, and we quickly came to the realization that the HR is as big as the room. It's as big as you want it to be, uh, because there's, it's so dynamic, it's so complex, uh, and there's a lot to it, uh, that, uh, not a lot to it in the sense of you've got payroll administration, you have benefits administration, you have policies and procedures, handbooks, you have wage uh, scales and salary surveys to conduct. You have disciplinary issues. You have union contract negotiations. I mean, it just doesn't end. And then it all changes with, with every court case. Well, don't the select board handle contract negotiations? Yes, they do. So that wouldn't be an HR person? Well, part yeah, sure. of our whole pitch with everything is technically, like, we handle the budget more mm -hmm. like we handle the HR, but we need HR and finance to support and do this professionally mm -hmm. because the boards are too stretched. So yeah, they would be doing a lot of that kind of contract negotiation, at least the research that goes behind it, and mm -hmm. obviously that's the dynamic we work out. But. And will they oversee, what would you do with payroll then? I mean, payroll can't go over to an HR, or payroll can send to the treasurer. Well, I work where payroll doesn't go with HR. Well, so, so it stays with 
the treasurer's office, and that's where the benefits are really handled in connection with payroll. And so I, I actually think that the most of the benefits coordination, that part of it would well, would stay with the treasurer's office, but we're, you know, we, we're we have time to decide that. Oh, yeah. We're just trying to I think that say there is a need for this, oh, absolutely. and we need to move forward with it. Oh, absolutely. Regardless of what work is decided, you know, you can always shift work, take it back. You know, obviously she's been doing it all and a good I job. Not, I do not do what I would call H what I consider HR in terms of dealing with hiring, mm -hmm. terminating, mm -hmm. contract negotiations, disciplinary, any of that. I don't do that. I really handle the payroll and the benefits. Mm -hmm. um, go over all of that with an employee when they come in who right. is new. So an HR person coming in would be doing those things that I mentioned. And it wouldn't be just on the town side. You're going to want somebody who's also going to be doing this for the school department. And that in itself could be a full-time job just doing those things for the town as a whole. Exactly. So it could be broken up between two budgets. It, it, it's it could good. Be I think it's good. Right. 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 Yes. And yes. I, I have no doubt the school would, would say, yippee, let's do it. <laughs> Which would mean they could fund it, which would still mean maybe on the town side it would be a half time position, but it's a full time, right. uh, mm -hmm. it's a full time and half time funded here and half time funded there, but maybe we'd have the benefit of a full time person. Right. Um, so, but in the meantime, uh, the reason we got into this is um, is that the work that, you know, I work 40 hours a week, John works 40 hours a week. I mean, I'm paid 35, but I'm there 40 to 45 hours a week. Joan's there for 40, and we actually don't do the same work. So this is not like a, 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 a treasurer's doing one thing, and she, here's an assistant, an assistant treasurer. We do very different things at our desk. We can do each other's work, but she, we're pretty much, those are two full-time jobs that are doing different jobs. So, I mean, that's why it seemed like um, I was trying to, you know, a recognition that there is something more going on there than assisting Treasurer Jones been here doing this kind of work for 20 years and mm -hmm. felt appropriate, but we didn't get very far with it. I mean, that's, it, it, was, it was there and then, you know, budget crunch and on all that and what more can we do with it? Would it go along with an increase in salary? Well, you know, how, how far we got with that too. Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, I think we all got, kind of got stymied, but um, it doesn't mean it wasn't important. It doesn't mean that it isn't important that, mm -hmm. that there be some kind of recognition for the work that's actually being done and that it's being done out of that office and whether it ought to continue or not is something that we are fully willing to discuss if there's another option for having some of this work done. That's, that's kind of, I think, where we, where we see things going over the next five years or so that we're kind of busting our seams in there. And the problem is not that oh, we're working so long or so hard. We don't mind working so long or so hard. I mean, that's just kind of the, we are the, the troubles when you get into that situation is always worrying about what isn't getting done or what is getting done. Um, what could we be doing better if we have more time to spend on some of these, as David mentions, policies every now and then. Um, and we'll stop and work on a, a, a policy, but we really, we've been talking for two or three years of revamping the financial policies and it's kind of catches can. Um, we just switched credit card companies, so I thought, well, now we'll work on a credit card policy. We haven't had one yet, so and that takes, it takes some time, especially if it's not something to do. I mean, mm -hmm. to find one from another town, <laughs> work on it. But, but I think that having a comprehensive group of policies like that that get regularly looked at is something that we want to be happening. Is that a finance director? Is that our office? Because we've got some more time? Is that HR? I don't know. This is, I mean, but I think that that's um, where we, where we want to go. But with this year's budget, we haven't done anything to change that. We're just leaving it as it was because that's pretty much what we've been. So I, to I do. and I didn't catch it. Is is Joan here? Is it uh, is it the week all week benefits and and um, benefits and payroll, or is it is that only a portion of which you, I mean? She does a lot. I, I, you do a lot, but I'm just trying to say, is that is that majority. like the majority of it, or is maybe 50 percent of it? No, I'd say the it's majority of it. The majority of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And related items. Majority. Yeah. You know, whatever. Workers whatever. Comp, you get. Workers' comp, unemployment insurance. Oh, but, that, but the majority of what you're doing two. is all this stuff. It's all related. To it's all related to. Absolutely. Right. Okay. Yes. So. 
Um, okay, borrowing fees, uh, I had it as 1,000. Basically, our borrowing fees, every time we go out for uh, one of the notes, it's $500 uh, fee to our advisor. It's going up to 550 so I put in for two of them again. We may or may not, uh, we were probably about to borrow twice during the year because we've been doing those shorter term notes, but it may be at another level this coming year because we're going to start hitting the $3 million mark and who's we may be handling it differently and putting it into the borrowing. So I don't know whether we'll end up using the 1100 but I have started out by putting in two bands at 550 That's how I got that increase. So there might be a little mm -hmm. wiggle room there. Um, continuing disclosure, where did I get that one? Five, three, one, three. Oh, financial services line. Okay, the financial services line, um, I itemized that out because that's obviously a jump. So it was, uh, we had 3,000. Um, it is a flat fee for our continuing disclosure, which we're in the process of right now um, to get that, that information together and filed with um, uh, SEC to, uh, this keeps us in compliance with our uh, borrowing, our bonds, our keeping our Banks informed of what's going on sets us up for our future borrowing. It's just one of the things once we get into the level of borrowing that we have been in that we need to do each year. So that's $2,000. Our OK valuation. Historically, that has been something that we take care of every other year. And we have been billing it every other year. And you'd see it in the budget, out of the budget, in the budget, out of the budget. So that would have gone up $7,200 this year. Ah. So I talked with, um, I did speak with Parker Elmore, who does our valuation. In this past year, he I noticed that he billed us in the during the year, and then he had a follow-up billing in the fall, which for us is great because that's two fiscal years. And so even though we'll have the valuation every two years, he can do it such that it bridges, goes over two fiscal years, and we're actually going to pay then an equal amount each year. So that will help us with our borrowing so that 36 3600 half of that $7200 dollars that we would pay in, in fiscal 19 we're actually going to scooch into fiscal early fiscal 20. Mm -hmm. so we'll have that evened out at, that line should hopefully stay about 5600 over the next um, few years um, yeah there's not a lot we can do there um, we have the software maintenance is is vadar our title insurance program um, the primary VADAR program is now paid completely by the accountant's office and we completely pay for the title insurance part of it which is the the one that's really only run out of our office that's the only we're the only ones who can log on to that program um, it is it is in the cloud but we're the only ones with access to it um, payroll Payroll um, is something where it, we are still for the town doing weekly payroll. That also, that's not just a matter of the extra cost of doing it each week, it's also part of our, um, our overhead, how we spend our time. And again, that would be one of those things that it would benefit us in two ways if we could also get the town up by weekly payroll, which the school already is. Um, it's something that I believe is being taken up, it's really not I mean, it's a, it's our wish. Maybe it's our recommendation, but it's really not within our control. That's not right. Something or yeah, board so, is going to. So the union, we're going to be talking to the unions about this and other issues. So we'll see how it goes. So is this fifteen thousand? You do the payroll for the school too, correct? Mm -hmm. Do they pay a portion of that? No, they don't pay a portion of it. Shouldn't they? Out of their budget? Uh, we have, uh, there are a number of budgets that uh, are a number of items in budgets out of, um, I don't know if there are other departments, but our of ours, unemployment is a separate line that we pay on the town side, workers comp. Um, I mean, it, that, that's just the way it's been. It's one of those all benefits, basically. Benefits come out of the town side so so why we isn't that in to get a true picture why isn't their portion in their budget because you don't want to give them that kind of money what 
they should be paying out of their budget. So, so the way, the, the so the way that, we, that they're uh, generating, so the way that they're we getting account, money for it. The way that we're accounting for this is through the Schedule 19, which is prepared every October, and the credit that we accumulate for handling their portion of the benefits, as well as other items like that, goes towards our net school contribution, the minimum required uh, contribution. Well, so how much is the credit? For all the total value of the snow plowing, of uh, the, uh, the, the other services that we provide for them, for the benefits, for the unemployment, for my, uh, for your time, but not my time. Is there a schedule that shows what those amounts are? Yeah. Schedule 19? Yeah. Have, you, have you seen it? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. So under, under red, re every form, every school district has to provide, has to hit two numbers, one of which is the minimum number that we have to raise a town meeting in order to qualify for it uh, under the state regulations. And the other one is what is your net contribution, which is a larger number, which includes all these other things. You have a certain target that you need to meet or exceed. We've historically exceeded, but these costs that you're talking about go towards that uh, net contribution. It, it honestly doesn't. I mean, it's still, it's still going to be in the bottom line. So mm -hmm. let's say you take five thousand out of here and you put it over there. You know, it, you, it's 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 not like we're saying let's have the next town pay it. That would be nice. Um, we really, I mean, the towns res we're responsible for it, and it doesn't matter to the taxpayer. It's the same dollars. Um, so okay, that's just that's just an allocation. Um, and personally, I feel like there's like a too much allocation between departments. Um, uh, you know, billing between departments, and you pay this one, and then they're writing, they're putting in the warrant to write out a check, and we're taking that check, and then we're giving it to another department, and they come back with a turnover of revenue into their department. Uh, you know, well, I, I just, in my opinion, <laughs> if you don't get a true budget if they're not res if everything is not listed in the budget to begin with. Correct. I think I think it's pretty much accepted that there's a lot of there's extra. Ex yeah, every every time it does it this way. Okay, but um, it would be. I mean, there's no reason they can't. Uh, we we can give you the number of what the difference is between what the town spends on payroll and what the school spends on payroll, and you might be surprised to see that the town is actually higher because we do it every week. So uh, the school has taken the lead many years ago in doing going to bi-weekly. So I would like to um, see what that develops. If we can do that with the town, we will save 3000 right out of this budget. And that would be permanent. And yeah. we would be freed up in, in our office. Yeah. Um, because on a three-day weekend, where we've got both the school and the town, um, mm -hmm. we're in early and we're staying late on that Tuesday. And, if we don't get to shuffle things around from week to week, um, we have to get that payroll in by a certain time every single week. So you have three-day weekend, and then you have a snow day, or someone's got a sick day or whatever, still someone. That means whoever's left is still going to stay there until 9 o'clock at night and get that payroll out. I mean, this is just, uh, and you know, no overtime, and, um, and not always convenient, and not always our best work after seven at night but um so i'll speak for myself on that one <laughs> <laughs> so Dan, is that schedule available through gateway posted there it might be under the accountant side okay all right um x for Clover, we, we said on that so we're moving that issue over to select board and they're going to take it up sure Okay, but we have to leave it in the higher amount for now, but if we're able to take that down, we will happily do that at some later point. Uh, for tax foreclosure, that's, uh, that, you know, you, that is not, that is what we spend on the attorney for collections, and it's also the fees. Every time we file a claim, it's a $550 fee in tax court. There are various other actual costs of 
um, of a case and of recordings and, and all the related expenses plus the attorneys. Do you typically Please. use the whole 6000 No, not typically. Um, for the first year or so, I, I didn't do any my first year here. Um, that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> um, it didn't seem like the, the the thing to do right out of the gate and so year two that we started uh, going into it and then I think it was last year that I came to you about mm -hmm. this time and said we've got these cases and we're just going to move forward with them because uh, basically the ones that hadn't paid when I had already were in a non-payment position when I came here just still weren't paying and they were just getting higher and higher usually I mean most of our increase when we've had an increase in the amount that's outstanding in tax title is from the same ones not paying again. It's not usually new mm -hmm. payers. Um, or if it is, you know, it's usually gone in that next year. So we really had some that we had to pursue, and we've been doing that. And um, uh, we do, this does relate to an article that is coming up for a warrant, but the, the trouble is when I got that money for you for what it, from you for what it was going to cost, um, it wasn't just write the check out right away. All of this happens in time and over time. And actually, even by the end of that fiscal year, I had only used about half of it. And then those expenditures went into the next year where we moved the budget down. So it's hard to gauge for it. Um, they are amounts that when we spend them, we add them to the tax bill, we get that money back. So there's, you should spend it to get the money back. It makes it difficult on, in doing the budgets. Um, a, a couple years ago, the collector had a um, the, a revolving fund account set up so that the fees that were collected would go into the account. And those could be the same ones that were expended then for the next one. So we're not having to figure out and put it into the budget and have it come and spend it out of it and then look for extra money or whatever. So um, and. Uh, I didn't do it at that time because I didn't really know, I didn't really think that it was going to be a very large number until I went to you last year for that extra $7,500. And so we, I have the option, I have the opportunity to do that also, and David put it on for the annual town meeting that we would set up a treasurer's revolving fund account so that the money's collected when, because we have some pretty large ones that have come in this year, and when the money comes back, it goes into general revenues. So it doesn't go against this line item from this spending, again, it goes into the town revenues. So we get the benefit, it'll go into your free cash, but this would allow it to sort of recycle itself and um, um, I think make for smoother operations. And then that money uh, within a, a year or so would just come right out of the, the treasurer's budget and we would be spending it out of uh, collections. So. That's something that you'll be taking up with them when you go over the warrant, but that is something that I would recommend. Mm -hmm. So let's see, we've already taken in over 50,000 in back taxes this year. So it has been That's worthwhile so to mm -hmm. pursue it. And um, why are they not paying? Do they just not have it? Or? Um, I, I don't know. I think that they're individuals there. Uh, they have their own situations. Um, I don't. I really can't get into why they're not paying. I, I don't think anyone's deliberately trying to do anything to us. But I think that if we do not stay on top of it, it's clear that we're letting them. Not only are we losing the money, but we're allowing our taxpayers to get themselves into a deeper hole. I mean, we're willing to work with anybody. I have. I have probably more more payment agreements. We are very, very willing to set up a pay payment agreements, even to the extent that when the payment, uh, the agreement, um, the payments that are set up aren't necessarily getting them all that much ahead, as long as we then say a time that we'll renegotiate it. Maybe their situation is better. So I do know some of them because we've worked on on payment agreements, but I don't consider those our delinquents, and you're not going to see those on the lines. So the ones who are not paying are the ones that I, I don't know the whole situation. And um, part of pursuing them kind of shakes that out a little bit. And um, a couple of the ones that we did file suit on last year, um, we were able to get agreements out of it within the first couple of months. I would really, really much rather put 
everyone's efforts into just getting the money in here rather than, no, no, we'd rather do it if people are enjoying going to court, paying extra attorney's fees. It costs the taxpayer less and it costs us less if we just, the sooner we can get into a payment plan. Yeah, we, we really do work with, I mean, and, and as does the collector before they even come upstairs. We, they don't come to us until, they're, until they close the fiscal year and they're wrapping things up um, by October, I, I, don't, I don't think it's October 1, September 30. She sends all the ones from the prior fiscal year that haven't paid, and that's when we begin to work on those. And honestly, most people really are doing their best, mm -hmm. and um, then really. So happy. is it, it mostly individual homeowners? It's not businesses. No, it is businesses too. Oh, it is. Uh -huh. Yeah, it can it can be either. Yeah. So. So, um, in would it be like if someone didn't pay their water bill? Does that get added on? to their property tax bill, or maybe even excise tax? Water and, not excise, water and sewer, and there's a third, oh, CPA, but that's part of the tax bill. Mm -hmm. So we get, um, when uh, Susan certifies it and sends it up, what she has is everything that they owe, uh, so it's all the real estate taxes. If they owe water and sewer at that time, it gets added to it, and her expenses and her publication fees, everything that's taken to get that far. Now again, we'll get, we will get all of that back. So we are not spending any money that we won't ultimately get back. Mm -hmm. But it puts us out in the short run, and um, and you know we have to spend the money to, to before we can get it back sometimes. But I think that. Um, uh, I, you know, I, I don't know if this is, we've only had one year of this, but last year when we had the active pursuit, we actually had um, fewer coming up at the end of that, that fiscal year, and those that did come up got paid fairly quickly. So we're still kind of dealing with a backlog, and hopefully we'll get that taken care of too. not an increase that was last year's cola that wasn't actually added in okay the 75 and the 906 okay the 1205 is uh, the change in the GIS from two years ago it was actually voted in 18 change I'm, I'm sorry it was voted in, in 17 which one are we on <coughs> uh, Green. Software maintenance. Software maintenance set. Yeah, the 1250 was actually voted in oh, okay. last year. Fiscal, well, okay. fiscal 17. Right. So it's, it's basically level funded, aside from the assessor's request of salary adjustment on theirs. Oh, that's what we took out? Uh, yeah, David reduced the the assessors requested. If you look on the next page, you'll see the, the uh, survey that the assessors did. Mm. I, I forgot. So, um, how many assessors do we have that are on the board? Three. 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 Typically, how many hours a week do they do? They they do meetings more than it's okay. Okay. similar to uh, registrars or board of health. Okay, so meetings. How often? There's probably anywhere between twenty in a typical year, twenty-two and thirty meetings. 22 to 30 meetings a year. 
And so if someone comes in and wants to and does an abatement and you have to go out and look at the house, who does that? You? Uh, I go out, typically I review all the applications when they come in. Mm -hmm. I go out and look at them. When it comes down to making a decision, the board will go out usually as a whole with me okay. and review. That's part of the meetings. We'll meet, have a meeting where we go out and review the applications. Oh, so the 20 to 30 meetings might are, are, are not necessarily like just here. It's, oh. Right, yeah. Typically, a meeting here will run anywhere between an hour and a half and two and a half hours. Mm -hmm. But we'll also have several meetings a year where we'll just meet to go and look at a dozen properties or so to file for abatement applications. Oh, you can like do them all in one day. Okay. Uh, well, mm -hmm. usually it's multiple. A couple days. Yeah. I mean, this year we didn't have a whole lot of applications. Uh, but typically we get anywhere between 20 and 50 a year. And do you have to look at all of them? I mean, go uh, to all those houses? Okay. Yeah, typically we look at, I go out and look at uh, approximately a fifth of the town every year, a fifth to a sixth of the town. So you're looking at 300 or so houses a year. Might not be an interior inspection, but looking at the card, going out, looking at what's on the card versus what's actually there. Okay, that's what you do. Yeah. So how about the ones that are the uh, the businesses? Do you have to? Ah, uh, same them? thing. Same thing with them. Yeah. And um, w when you, uh, how often do you review all the properties? Uh, Is that every three years or? State, something? we revalue, we used to, yeah. well, Revaluations were every three years. The state required that we go through and look at everything every nine years, every three revals. They changed it to every five years starting, we just revalued this year. Uh, they changed it to every five years. So now instead of a three year cycle, it's a five year cycle and it's two reval cycles now. So it really went from nine to 10 years. That they would require us to look at the properties, which is why we do roughly about a sixth. So when you have to go look at the properties, it doesn't necessarily mean you got to go in. It just means yeah, you, just you go out and look, and does this, what's there actually match what's on the card? The sketch, or the, is it a cape with a half story, or did they change it and it's a colonial, or is there an addition on the back or a pool, sheds, decks, garages, anything, yeah. and if items were removed as well. A lot of times, outbuildings have collapsed, pools have collapsed. Do you have to? Do you have to let the people know that you're coming? I mean, do you make a? Do you call ahead? Um, or do you abatements. Just have... When we go out, we need we go inside. Mm -hmm. Just to we let them know. We usually schedule those. Okay. But that's based on them requesting an abatement, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when you go out there, okay. Yes. And then, how, and then, what kind of hours are we looking at? If you, because I think you talked about if, uh, you know, one of the businesses disputes it. Commercial abatements don't really take up much more of our time okay. as a residential. That, but there's an increased expense because that's mostly going through legal. So we have, uh, right now we currently have one pending before the ATB and everything that comes in, it just goes right up to town council. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, at this point, I would think that if we were gonna give salaries back, then all the departments would have to be considered and it would have to go to town vote again because that's where it was voted on to have them removed, correct? All of this would have to be voted by town meeting. You would put the money back into into the line items and uh, town meeting would have to approve that. Right. Mm -hmm. And they're, they put in that figure because that's what they were getting before. But they realized based on what other boards are getting that it's probably highly unrealistic for a figure like that for three board members. Mm -hmm. 
Are you Although, talking an eighty-eight thousand? That one? No, the six oh, thousand. Oh, no, the six that's thousand. Eighty. That's the entire budget. Oh, that's the entire. Okay. Yeah. The six thousand. Oh, I see. Six thousand nine sixty-two. Yeah. I mean, it is in line with if you look at the other communities on here. There's a number that are at or above. That's about the median. There's a number that are significantly higher. There's a few where we couldn't determine what their budget was because it's kind of. Mm -hmm. hidden or wasn't available on one. Okay. okay, thank you. Great. Thanks. Any anything else? I, I don't think so. I was I was just curious on who I'm exactly I knew you, my understanding is you did a, most of it. I just was more I was curious on a little bit but I think you answered most of those questions. What the um, the board does? Yeah, they. I mean, they meet. They oversee and approve, and mm -hmm. they're they're the, the review board for my work. Right. Okay. Somebody comes in with an abatement and disputes it. They set up a hearing with with the board. Come and make their case. We go out and look at it. The board looks at it, and then the board decides. Mm -hmm. So, like when uh, people apply for a water sewer. Abatement and the select board approve it, correct? Yeah, your office handles the paperwork, but it's up oh, to the Janice board. does, yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's so actually the, the select board that approves anything that they request through his office, correct? No. No. No, well, why? Why, Cause the, why isn't it? Because the select board are the water the select board. commissioners. Yeah. Okay. Right. And then so when they're dissatisfied with what my board does, they have the option of appealing to the state, okay. and they have to pay a so that's yeah. a fee. A norm for like Janice, we share between the offices along with Jessica's. The so five-hour Janice, one that's going to the planning board too. No, no, no. That's okay. My the five hours that I have is shared with David for ten, and also five hours with the town clerk. So there's one position that 20 hours a week that handles three departments. Very great, great. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Thanks so much. <coughs> David? Yeah. How about yours? <laughs> Save the best for last. <laughs> how about if we just. Do you want to breeze through all the yep. uh, the 100 budgets? And That'd be good. I'll go quickly and tell me when I'm going too quickly. Mm -hmm. So for town government, the 100 level budgets, all of them, when you put them all together based upon my recommendations, you're looking at a one less than 1% increase, 0.83% increase for the combined. That's mm -hmm. this number right here. So how did we get there? Moderator, 100 bucks. Select board, no real change there. Uh, you'll see at the very bottom that there's a uh, $5,000 item which has been deleted. That's simply been transferred over to the capital article in the warrant. This is for the web design, uh, web page redesign. And it seemed like that was more appropriate to put it into the capital budget than an operational budget. Town administrator, the increases that are contractual. Um, hold on. Oh, I don't. The tuition meetings that was an increase of nineteen hundred. No big deal. It was just you were doing more meetings, or. Uh, I don't see. I don't see the increase. Oh, the change. Uh, line number one two two five three twenty tuition meetings. Isn't that an increase? Four hundred and seventy five. Percent? Where are you? Where are you? You're on page 47. Yeah. You should Am be I on page 48. Oh. All right. I was on page, I, I thought we were still on page, when you said the 5,000, you went right to $5,000 decrease on select board. Are we on no, select board? Fast. I'm on the oh my minister. goodness, no wonder why I'm a little behind. Do you want to go back to the uh, select board? I just thought you were listing up some of the big, the big numbers of changes. When I was going down, looking at um, 
Yeah. Big cha change increase. Well, tuition and, and uh, tuition and meetings. The select board have stepped up their involvement in professional development. Uh, we have three positions, three positions coming up for uh, election in, in a month's time. Yeah. Uh, it's very conceivable that we'll have a very active select board at the, as a result. So I'm building in money for the future for their professional development. Oh. Okay, thank you. You're helpful. <laughs> Page 49, Finance yes. Committee. Reserve fund, I increased it from 40,000 to 10,000. I'm sorry, I've increased it by 10,000 from 40 to 50,000. This is your margin on a $17 million general fund budget. You've got $50,000 wiggle room. If you think about it in terms of percentages, it scares the pants off of me, but I recognize that we can't go too much higher. Mm -hmm. Town accountant, uh, we are going out to bid for this service uh, at the end of the three-year contract. As you can see, we moved ten, uh, five hours from the accountant and FY uh, 18 to, f to five hours and 19 and gave the other five hours to the planning board. So this is the assistant town accountant? That yeah. it, that's where it went to the planning board? Yep. Yeah. Okay. The assessors we just did. Treasurer, we just did. Tax collector, we did. Bottom of page 53. Legal expenses, I reduced that by 5,000 because we're not seeing the legal activity that I had anticipated with the change in the public records law. But uh, hold to that thought. We may need some, based upon the, based upon the time that's changed from. February 5th, when I submitted this to March 5th, which it is today, the legal stirring seemed to be a lot more active, so we may want to relook at that issue. Mm. Page 55, Conservation Commission, we were funded. Planning Board, we just did. Board of Appeals. Um, I took a harder look at that because they haven't been using their budget, so I reduced them by 11%. Long Range Plan Implementation Committee doesn't exist. Property insurance, this is based upon a, uh, an estimate, a 2% two, two increase, uh, which was quoted to us. We will not receive this bill until after town meeting, so uh, I may come to you and say we need a little bit of extra money on this one. Can I jump back for one second? Sure. And just a uh, Board of Appeals. Yep. They, they they still have in there a salary, a board, they still have a stipend? Yep. They don't have anybody supporting them. Because they have no one supporting them. Yep. Okay. Years ago I gave them somebody to support them and they didn't use that service so I transferred the hours. Elsewhere, I'm sure they'd be productive. So they just. Okay. All right. Page 57 the Senior Center Operations, Town Hall Operations. These are the budgets that are used to operate but not maintain the buildings. Okay, so this is electricity, this is the sewer bill, the water bill. The electricity, the heat, and the oil, the alarm system. So, senior, the senior center operations is that this is separate from your normal budget? This is not the Council on Aging budget, oh. and it's not the maintenance budget. This is the operation of the building, because more than just the Council on Aging is in the building. You've mm -hmm. got HPAD, you've mm -hmm. got Veteran mm -hmm. Services, you've got uh, Council on Aging, Historic Commission, Planning Board, and uh, Park and Rec okay. are in that building. So with the new, in, in my understanding is, so this budget here, 
where we are. This is to, they're saying it will go because it'll be a newer building, it'll be less. Is that? They're not saying that I'm, I've made these adjustments based upon historical use of the, uh, the building. No, but what I'm thinking is some, you know, thinking of going forward, we're getting a brand new building. They're talking about brand new building. Right. It will. Are, do you're not going to know until actually yeah a year after you're into it for a year yeah what the savings are going to be or not savings this is the operation for the old building for a fiscal year if everything goes mm -hmm. according to oil they're going to be ground breaking ground sometime around june mm -hmm. of 2018 with the completion date of july of 2019 if that's if that's how things work out Yep. If it gets to that part, then we have some things on the board. Well, yeah, we can talk about that in a little bit. Town Hall operations, again, I've just based that upon what we do currently and, and made adjustments based upon history. Did you um, ask for some? Um, What's that committee you go to where they have the money? CPA? Yeah. Oh. Did we ask for any money for the building? Yes, we did. We asked for 268000 was it? Right. So like there's that. there's a little bit of a problem with that. Are you sure? <laughs> what? So the problem being is because the CPA granted money to the town hall to repaint in the, in the past. So when they submitted something to Boston asking about if it's maintenance, the CPA can't cover maintenance. So painting is listed as one of those regular maintenance. Um, now, they can do the, one of the things that came up is the pillars. The pillars need repair. So it's something that they can look at doing the pillars, but it is not something that they can do the painting because of the second time around. How do you want to put siding on this building? I, I, do they cover I, that? They way. would cover, they did cover that on another place, siding on a building, because they were saying it's preserving. Right. Right? But. Why? I, it's You can't go siding, though, because the historical? Is that what it is? You're pretty. No one would really, really want to see, so I don't necessarily know. Yeah. It's a But you're not, you don't have the money to keep repainting it. And all the salt from Route 9, when they're plowing, gets thrown on this building. What do you think that does to the hardwood? It rots it. Well, we're supposed to have um, a uh, fund, you know, we're supposed to have money for regular maintenance. And we should have a budget for regular maintenance, they're saying. And I, I understand that, and we probably should, but, you know, we don't and have we so do. much money. And, and, <laughs> and we, we do. do. But, and we do. Mm -hmm. And we add money to it every oh, yeah. single year. Mm -hmm. So don't don't, don't portray the town as being lax on its maintenance. Effort. No, no, but we can only do so much with what we have. Probably we don't have enough. We're it's the townspeople that get that money in there. Well, I agree. So I, I, I agree. I, I'm for using the money. Well, they, when they submitted it to Boston, it came back as painting was not. They could not do that. Um, is there alternative things so, to do to wood so let's, that let's, would make it more? Let's stop chasing the hair of the CPA because there's mm -hmm. a lot to talk about and it's getting late. All right. And okay. I appreciate the work of the CPA committee fund for what we do for the town of Hadley. You've contributed many hundreds of thousands of dollars for many worthy projects. So. Um, but not to the town hall. Well, they, they contributed, a, well, in excess of $150,000 for the original painting job. So. Mm -hmm. And if you remember back to 2007, what the town hall looked like back then, I mean, the, that was a job that needed to get done. So can we build the repainting of this building every so many years into the budget? Well, I think that's what they're trying to do, but mm -hmm. it didn't work out so hot into the town hall budget into the cpa budget okay 
as under historic preservation. So. Oh, because this is considered a historical building? No, 1840. Right. Okay, so, I so, get you now. So the good news is, I mean, there, I, I think that right now they're some resubmitting. I think that... Um, but in the meantime, you're, you're giving all the other money away. No. No? No. 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 It's still there, but he's resubmitting the to look at doing the pillars. Okay, next building. So North Hadley Village Hall. So last year I, I uh, funded it because I thought we funded it only for half a year because I thought we were going to sell the building and it turned out that we're no, in fact, we're not going to sell the building. So I'm now put in the, a minimum amount to keep the building going along for a 12 month period. There's going to be a big meeting on the 21st to talk about getting another RFP for the sale of that property going. So we'll see where that goes. Russell School Operations, those are, um, that's just enough to keep the, the building shuttered. Uh, we have no plans for it other than storage space right now. And there you go. Okay. So I missed the last two meetings. Or the last meeting in a select board meeting when you presented your budget. How did that go? It went swimmingly. Swimmingly? Yeah, I love it. That's so is it a balanced budget? Uh, yeah, it's a balanced budget. How'd that happen? Uh, a lot of good work with the d divisions. We instead of departments meeting and, and putting together their budgets in silos and not communicating with each other, we had each division come together and try to meet certain goals and objectives, and we created a uh, a good cross communication so that we talked about raising revenues and strategies for that, cutting expenses by making things more efficient, uh, strategies for enhancing that and pursuing those efforts, and a combination of both, you know, where, where do we need to go. So the target for the... Um, so you're not using it for cash, to my own set? Yes, we are, but we're doing it according to the policy. So the policy that the, both the Finance Committee and the Select Board uh, approved was that you were going to reduce your reliance upon f uh, free cash by a factor of $75,000 per year so that eventually you got down to no free cash being used for recurring revenue uh, expenses within the budget. So last year, you ended up spending $275,000 of free cash on recurring expenses within the budget. So the target would be to reduce it from 275 down to 200, but we went aggressive and we reduced that reliance down to 125. So there's $125,000 of free cash used to balance the budget for the recurring revenue. So that's what we're doing. So when did we set that policy? You set that policy last uh, two Decembers ago. That wasn't us, that was the select board. No, you both, no? You both took a vote on it. So we you're only board. using a hundred and something free cash to balance the budget? 125,000? 125 for the recurring expenses. So the details, We're using an additional free cash for one-time expenses within the budget. Details. How much money do you think you're getting back in free cash? $550,000. So, so what does that consist of? The details are going to be on pages 23, 24, and 25. Now tell me what the $550,000 consists of. All right, $550,000 is the estimated certified free cash that we're going to have in hand at the end of September 2018. And where is that? Where is that coming from? That's coming from a variety of sources. It comes from overestimate, underestimates in the, uh, no, overestimates in the, uh, in the recurring on the local revenues. So, for example, if you take a look at the um, 
building inspector, we anticipated that they would be bringing in $93,000 uh, uh, for the entire year in FY18, the current fiscal year. By the halfway mark of the year, they brought in $136,000. So they exceeded in six months what we thought they would do in 12 months. That surplus goes into free cash. Mm -hmm. So there are one-time revenues that go into the free cash. There's uh, delinquent taxes and the interest that uh, exceed our, our commitment that goes into free cash. Lots and lots of different strands of money go into building free cash. So do you have it written down what actually can, is that number consists of? This is an estimated number. I based, based on historical averages. Okay, so I understand that. So come September, we're gonna know where what made up that 550,000? So this is the number we're seeing when uh, t fall town. Yeah. I just find that after you get certified, we're hoping. Right. But don't we think that that number shouldn't even be that high? That's about where you are average. Every year we're average five hundred fifty thousand coming yeah. back to us. That tells us our budget. Sometimes a little bit more, and sometimes just the value of life. Were we lit, uh, last look? year was a large amount, but the year before that, I didn't think it was that large. Right, but there are other years when it tops a million dollars. So last year I thought we were going into it looking about 500000 and then we ended up with eight hundred. Yeah. Something like that, right? Mm -hmm. I would not go any higher than this estimate. 550 is kind mm -hmm. of the tops that I would go at this point. So this three, the one-time free cash, one-time expense, is that in here too? Yeah. I see the 125. So oh, there it is, the three, three, seven, eighty. Yeah. Okay. So we're giving too much money to the departments in their funding. Is that is that what a lot of that is? Understanding well, that's, what well, that's one of the strengths for making free cash is you, you have the departmental returns. So money that, uh, that, let's say, I don't go to as many professional developments. Uh, no, I so understand that. So I, I I've got left over it goes back into the general fund and gets converted eventually into free cash. Oh, I understand how it works. Yeah. But my thought process is here we are last year trying to beat our heads to supply two firemen and where we're going to get the money. And obviously, we have the money. We just. it's somewhere we're getting it back so wherever it's going could be reduced so we have we don't have to beat our heads over if somebody needs something is what i'm trying to say right isn't that how it should be well i mean in a perfect world we would have a lot of money for everything that we desire but unfortunately it's never how budgets work we've got unlimited desires and limited means to meet them so you've got to make decisions along the way i understand that yeah. And Terry, to your point, a lot of that, so I understand it's going towards one-time expenses. So I, Those are things. I was trying to figure out where it was coming from, right? The yeah, bulk of it. Regardless of where it's coming from, if what it's going to is one-time expenses, that if you were to then try and reappropriate that towards the firefighters to put it back into the operational budget to rely on that more, those one-time expenses would have to be come out as basically capital expenditures, right? Mm -hmm. and then capital override items. Mm -hmm. So it's not like it gets us any more money because we are using all that free cash for something. And that's the problem that I've had for the last year now is that like I've heard that there are items that we're taking out of the budget and putting into one-time capital mm -hmm. expenses, you know, like bulls for fire or bulls for policemen or whatnot, um, just because we're, we keep tightening our belts. So it's like, again, there's not a plenty to go around, so I'm not so sure that even if we tried to use that free cash for operational budgets, it would just borrow from here to pay Paul as we supposed to sit around here and cause us a headache on the other side. That makes sense. Yeah, it does make sense, but okay, that's good. So each division was given a certain target uh, to meet in terms of how much of the overall fire department personnel increase they needed to cover. We figured that number was around $200,000 to be shared between the six divisions. Mm -hmm. 
Um, the 100 level division, their share of that was $30,000. So could they come up with decreases or new revenue or a combination of both to hit that $30,000? Now, Sue Glowatsky said, well, all we have to do is double our demand fee and we'll make that $30,000. So that's just one fee that can go up. And in fact, you can see that there's an article to that effect here. She's not sure she likes her own suggestion. I'll let her talk to that. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, um, there's $30,000 potentially here that is not shown in your revenue stream here because this is a vote that has not happened yet. Mm -hmm. I have a question on this page on 25. The uh, 5,000 to stabilization, I know that's something we, you know, we're thinking about, we, we may like. I know that's something that's unfavorable un, un with the select board. Mm -hmm. How about the, the 50,000, um, the reserve fund, is that, the, is that for the school that no, we talked about? That's your that's reserve ours. fund. Sorry. That's our reserve fund, that's, yeah. that's for the finance committee. Yeah. Okay. And the one for the school that we talked about, that that's would come out of stabilization? That's right. That's the okay. suggestion. Right that's now. the suggestion. And the unfunded with uh, liability with the pension assessment? Yeah, so uh, a long time ago, before I was part of the town of Hadley, there was an opportunity to do early retirement in order to cut down on, on costs for municipalities. So an individual was given an opportunity to uh, basically, the, no, I won't go to the formula, but basically you could retire about five years earlier than you thought you could. And one individual took that, but that created an unfunded liability within our pension assessment, which we're gonna live with for another three or four years. That amount is $19,042. Okay. So per year? Per year. And this is a decision that was made before I showed up. But do you think it pays off in the long run because that figure's lower than what they would have collected in five years and then do the math totaled up? <clears throat> this, when this opportunity came around, I was town administrator up in Deerfield, and I said that the reasons for doing this are not economic reasons. These are managerial reasons. So you want to, you want to move things around and people around in a way that makes more sense to you, do it for that reason. But don't think of it as going to save any money in the long run on that one. Um, and, and just before we leave or start the warrant, I just had a, a couple more quick questions. Sure. Is there, so just going back to, because I think this is going to be, it may end up being an issue because we talked about the, um, taking away a lot of the stipends for all the boards. Mm -hmm. One is, I was surprised that we, we still have one for the Board of Appeals, but because I think that they just are like, mm, I think of them as is pretty much, they're not like a working, they, they may have meetings like we have meetings, um, I believe, right? Yeah. It's not, they, they are very similar to some of the other committees, yeah. right? So that one I would question, and the other one I would question was the planning board. Now, can, it, I, not that I don't think that they need the, the extra five hours, but what if we left the five hours where, where they were? And if they needed extra help, couldn't they just ask for um, someone to help once in a while? Couldn't you get some, couldn't they just um, get the, if, if, if we left the hours where they were, and she's still doing the hours and charged it under that area. Okay. Yeah, and they needed some extra help couldn't they just another department help out? Yeah, that could happen. And then we don't stir up all I kinds guess of this stuff. Is, I guess this is here for transparency's sake. Yeah. I don't think it'll stir up too much. I mean, oh, I think it will. <laughs> Sorry. Well, I didn't hear what you said. I don't think it'll stir up too much. Mm -hmm. But at the very least, I think we have good reasoning behind it. We were talking about you know the working board versus not a working board, but. Still five hours for 
very much administrative support, I think, is nominal. But you can still make the argument that in the long run, as we're looking for the you know town planner, a full salary position, and as we're transitioning that way, it will make sense to get rid of a planning board stipend as we transition out and have like an actual staff to support them. And that's the way that it's moving, right? So this five hours to get a little bit of staff time in there shouldn't reflect on what we feel the planning board is or isn't doing and what they will be doing in five years, which is to tell the town that whole narrative, right? So in short, somebody gets up and says like, well, why are they still getting money if they get a staff person? And we say, five hours a week, that's it. And we're looking at giving you an actual, you know, 40 hours a week staff person, and we will be getting rid of their statements at that point. So um, you're saying because of the way, that what they're doing in the working board, now, what do you think about the Board of Appeals moving, taking that away? I, I'm just saying, we, I, I think we need to be a little more uniform because they might yeah. not be a working board. No, I think it's all ties <laughs> into the, As well as yeah, the planning board. I think the Board of Appeals is, is they meet when, they, when they're when they required to meet. They can go for months without a meeting, and then there's to a time when you have lots of things happening and they have to meet all the time. Uh, the Board of Appeals is an important backstop for your zoning enforcement because they're the people who go, you go to for special exemptions. They also are the appeal board for a zoning decision that, that Tim might make. They're the place where people can say, no, I think that decision is an error and I'd uh, like you to rule in my favor. Right. Yeah. So that's a very important function. I think that they're all important functions. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, all our departments are very important functions. I'm just trying to think, how do we show that we're not picking on some and not the others, you know, mm -hmm. and, and try to, you know, and, and, and one of the things was is that we did bring up was, oh, you have staff and you don't have staff. Mm -hmm. And so that's how we worked. <laughs> but now it's, when I'm looking through this, it's not necessarily the case. And so I was looking to see I think we're, and especially to seeing the assessors want their, their stipend back. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we need to find, a, you know, come up with a good rule of thumb. I was actually hoping the planning board was hiring somebody yeah. part time to learn what they do. So, because if something eventually happens and. So I don't think it's. Board. We did have a rule of thumb. Like the rule of thumb is if you have staff. Right. You're generally not considered a working board. Obviously, it needs more refinement. But when you start doing that, you're getting in the realm of like, we should sit down with select board and actually have a policy, like a written to a written and agreed upon policy about like when it is appropriate to give a board a stipend or not. So how are you going to handle well, denying the assessors? assessors? How would you handle saying no to the assessors that this, want their this stipend? This isn't really a stipend, right, for the planning board. I mean, she's this woman is a full-time employee, correct? Well, yeah, that's five hours of her, 35 hours mm -hmm. per week. Right, so stipend is different than... Right, yeah, I'm not talking about the five hours. Oh, okay. I'm talking about for the planning board themselves. Oh, okay. For the assessor board themselves. We need to have a policy about which boards do or don't get money and a rationale behind it based on best practices and comparable communities, et cetera, et cetera. That's something we should sit down and clarify with the select board. Mm -hmm. I think so we don't get another squabble and so it's all transparent and so that... No, you know, we're not squabbling, you know, but I agree. Because we're not playing favorites or looking like So maybe that's right. an agenda item for the tri board on Wednesday. There will be no meeting Wednesday, just let me tell you. Because of the storm? Thing. That's right. I've heard that too. <laughs> we're gonna Terry's have, weather we're, report. We're going, we're going ahead <laughs> with the meeting. Not if you get a foot of snow. <laughs> there's, no, there's no postponing this meeting. So um, at this point, what do we think that we should do? Um, just I leave everything? There. No, no, I'm talking about the, what I've just mentioned, some of the items. Do we think just leave everything where it is, talk to the select board? Do you think we should maybe move the, um, the planning board hours back and just let them, if they need help, ask for another department for some help? I would recommend that you wait until wait. you hear a bigger picture because you okay. have the schools and public safety coming in yeah. tomorrow night. Okay, so how are we going to handle us going through all these uh, changes or all some of these items? Are you just going to read, because I hear Jessica had mentioned a, a handful of things that need to be adjusted. Yeah. We, we do see some adjustments all around. Are you going to take those and give us some? Yeah, I can coordinate that. You are, okay. Um, the, um, 
Sue Walski there, the additional two and a half hours that was taken away from her mm -hmm. and her assistant, and now that. That's, uh, that's something you have to talk about with the select board. Okay, so I, I guess we will because to me that's, you just created more work for them when we took hours away from them. Talk to the select board. Okay. okay. Right. We will. Um, and uh, right before we start, the last thing, um, can you just please show me where the maintenance part is that we are doing? Because I do have a CPA meeting next Monday. <laughs> uh, if you go to uh, yeah. budgets for 90, and that's going to be on page. Page 67. All right. To 68. 67, 68. Yeah. So this is where I'd look for the, uh, okay, I see it, building maintenance. Thank you. You can see that it's going up by $15,000. Mm -hmm. Okay. Even with the $10,000 cut. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do we okay. have a new dog officer or do we have both do two dog officers? We have a dog officer who's a member of the police department and we have an animal inspector who's a member of the board of health. Okay. So was Officer Cook still the? No, it is, uh, I'm blanking on his name, but it's another uh, officer. Okay. I only asked because I heard, I guess it was Jess mentioned his name, and it wasn't Officer Cook, so yeah, I was just yeah. curious. Sorry, I can't no. blank him right now. No, that's fine. So, I, are you done with okay. your questions? Yeah. So, I just have one question because, you know, I'm out in the world of Hadley. What is, can I just ask you, what is going on with these articles that are pertaining to um, the Senior Center? There are two articles pertaining to the Senior Center. Uh, they both petitioned. They mm -hmm. both received 19 signatures. Those signatures were certified as Hadley voters, and therefore they meet the minimum qualifications for placement on the warrant. So both these articles are on the warrant, and I don't see any way to change that. Um, the first article proposes to move the senior center building from the location just up the street to the Hynoski property that we acquired over the summer, North the Hadley. nine acres up in North Hadley. Uh, the second article proposes to rescind the balance of the money raised for the senior center, less any money that we've uh, spent already. The total of that uh, of that uh, money raised is seven point one million dollars. We have spent to date about a quarter of a billion dollars at this point. We've signed contracts for owners project manager services for one hundred thirty eight thousand dollars and for an architect for $434,000. So all this is happening because... So... Will you tell me? It's all happening because of the parking lot with the, with the Legion? Is we're going to let the Legion speak for themselves. Okay. Okay, they're meeting. that's the reason why we can't postpone. Wednesday's meeting because the senior they're going to be there. They're going to be there with the select board. At what time do you know they're on the? Starts at six o'clock and we're done when we're done. Okay, but they're on the agenda for first. No, try board first. Right, so they're on agenda for seven. So, something like that, seven o'clock. Okay. And I, I was sorry. Oh, okay, if if um. We did the senior center. We built it. Everything's fine. Uh, it does it, and then, then if the senior center, I mean, if the legion then sued, they could put a, a suit in and file a suit against. And that would stop anything that's happening. No, I mean after it's done, right? Or would they file suit? They'll file suit before, before it happens. Before it happens. And if it's a legit suit, then actually at the time, then it will stop. Everything ceases to let us resolve, correct? Right. Is that how it works? Depends. On what the suit is. It depends right. on the facts. Well, in my personal opinion, I think that, you know, I think the seniors deserve a new building. But I think the way it happened and all the changes that has happened 
from day one to now, and it was never presented. For what we know now, we wasn't presented to the residents when it was voted upon. You know what I'm saying? No. So because it was, I don't think you're right. I, I hear that going around, but I just I, don't think it's I, right. It's just my personal opinion. I'm not yeah, I saying what anybody right else. There. I just think that there were, things keep changing, dollars amount, everything keeps changing with the senior center. It's not like the library, which had all their I's and T's cross dotted. It's they winged it. And I think it needs to be all put together and looked at as a whole, not piece by piece. That's all I'm saying. Okay. So going back to the two articles, I was asked by Mr. John Michikowski and I was asked by Brian West, the moderator, to run these two articles after they were submitted to town council. So town council has reviewed them. He was very quick to say that the first article has no weight. It does not What's the first one? The well, first one is to move them up. Uh, uh -huh. So it is town meeting cannot compel the selectmen to move buildings from one lot to another. So the first one has no weight. Mm -hmm. It took a little bit of research, but he came up with the same conclusion for the second article. That because we have entered into contracts totally more than half a million dollars, town meeting as a legislative body cannot infringe upon the executive authority of, of uh, the select board. And abrogate those contracts. Mm -hmm. so, so then why are the articles on there? Because they have to be on there because they are petitioned articles. But so we'll I, vote on them because they yeah. have any debt. I've asked great. town council to provide me that that those opinions in writing and I'm not willing to talk any further about this until I see what the writing is because I want to make sure that I'm getting this. Fair clear because a lot is riding on it. Yeah, I don't think we ought to cut that legal budget. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you better add to it because <laughs> you're going to need it. Sad to say that a lot of money gets wasted in legal fees. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, be wrong. I'm just saying a lot of money does get wasted. And so this is the reason why we need to meet on Wednesday with the, with the Legion. I know, and I understand, but I, I'll pray that it doesn't snow for you, okay? Thank you. <laughs> I, I don't want to work in it either. <laughs> so, what was the um, so I did watch the last meeting a little bit about um, the things that we had discussed and I have been working on the HR thing and hopefully by the end of the week I will have everything together that I have worked on and I'll email it to all of you. So, but I did watch David at the Selectman's meeting um, and he did bring up to them that we were still interested in um, moving forward with this as an override. None of them responded to anything he had to say. I don't know if you just said it a quick passing or or whatever, but um, I also heard on the last meeting that I was not at that um, it was instructed to us that we have to go to the select board meeting to ask their permission to put this on the warrant. And that is what David said to them that he told us. Is that correct? So the select board ultimately controlled the overrides, any override. Right, and you say that we have to ask them. You have to have them to you have to convince them that they need to you know, pull the trigger on the override. Mm -hmm. you know, the town meeting can pass it, the finance committee can recommend it, it's up to the select board to implement it. They're so, the only ones who pull that trigger. Correct. But so, from my feeling of the last meetings, I don't feel the select board is in. I think I'm always. But I still that. think that there's two different things, right? Okay. Like supporting it and then be implementing it. If town meeting, we made a case on town meeting floor and the whole town said, yes, we want to pay more money for IT, HR, and finance. Right. At that point, I don't think the select board would sit there and say, we disagree with you. We are not going to do that. 
Correct. So we're going to be faced right. with the situation that we were last time. But yes. <laughs> no, I'm saying that. So, what we need from the select board in terms of what David just outlined is for them to implement it, which is like we can't force it down their throats, as it were. No. Like they do have the authority to say no, mm -hmm. but that's different than getting their support on the matter. Okay. Right. I think that the select board, being an elected body, especially would go along with the will of the voters mm -hmm. town meeting. So what we have to do our main task is pitching it to town meeting to get them on board. Okay. But you have to have it on the board first. Which is what the select like board needs to do. Yeah, it needs to do. You can build it into the motion. Okay. Well we don't want to we don't want to do what happened last time and just have two you know set the surprise. Yeah. Nobody so, wants to do that. Well, that's so what we, I'm saying. So, so we need we to go to the select board and yeah. say this is what we'd like to do. Why, why, I mean, because I thought last year we were all talking about this it. This is another great thing to talk about on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, unfortunately, so I think we'll come down the only the time I get to talk to them is at our meeting, and we need to be on the same page before we go to the tribe board meeting. Isn't that correct? Sure. Okay. I think it'll come down to one of two things. Either one, we'll have it all in the same warrant, mm -hmm. or same warrant article, in which case this is where I got into the recommendations because if you have both the budget and the override in one article and then underneath it says select board supports mm -hmm. or guidance committee supports, it's all in one deal. It looks better, I think, for our case. I think it'll be harder to get the select board to go for. I think the other more feasible option is having the budget, mm -hmm. just just the budget in the one article and then another article maybe right after, maybe right before, depending on how we structure that, including the override, mm -hmm. at which point for the budget, select board can recommend all they want. Mm -hmm. For the override, preferably I'd say maybe they abstain or may neutral, maybe they want to say something like we want to see where town meeting's at with this. Mm -hmm. um, or they could say that they don't support it, they uh, disapprove. But I don't think that they would be so opposed to, and we should bring this up, we should directly ask, I don't think they would be opposed to at least putting it on its own article to bring the town meeting to ask them. Mm -hmm. I don't think that they go so far as to not even want to put it in front of town meeting at all. At what least on our behalf. Yeah, I think I think having a separate article that addresses the override is a better way to go. That's what they briefly, very briefly mentioned at their last meeting. Mm -hmm. So, okay. and that's one of the reasons why I sent out that uh, that uh, primer from the Department of Revenue so the Again, it's technical stuff, but you get a sense of the different ways you could put this together so that uh, you can achieve the result that you want. Then we have to try and get 19 signatures. You only need 10. Yeah, but we missed it. It's, uh, it's already oh, yeah, we're, we're so. close to work. I was thinking the same thing that you were, which yeah, is I, why I asked I three meetings ago. <laughs> I think we just go to them and say, listen, we want this on the warrant. We've been doing work on this. You can even vote against it. You can even say you disapprove of it mm -hmm. on the warrant. We'll make the case for it. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that they'd still wall so much as to say, no, we won't even put it on the warrant. Okay, I can't so see that happening. We'll see on Wednesday. Okay. Fair enough. But I personally am still for moving forward with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because obviously this town needs it. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think they Not realize that too. They just don't think the time to go for it. But I don't think that inherently they're really against it for whatever reason. Which is again why I don't see why they wouldn't put it on the one. But might be reading into it a little. So it'll be good to get it all out in the open on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Unfortunately, I might not be here. Do you think that the town so, would vote so otherwise? I'll be watching you. Okay. <laughs> From my computer. Very over. difficult to say. The town has never voted for a general override. I don't even think one has been presented. Yeah. Uh, I think that you would have to build the case very solidly that this is the reason why you need it and these are the benefits of having it. Time is changing and you not only have to look for today but you have to look for 10 years from now, 15 years from now and obviously the board's prior to us years ago we never thought to do any of that and I think that we have to make a step in the right direction. Okay. So just a little bit of calendar work um, on my other four ago. Um, 
we're, we're beginning negotiations with the three collective bargaining units this week. So we'll keep you, you know, we obviously can't divulge what goes on in the collective bargaining session. But in terms of its overall impact upon the budget, I'll let you know. Um, on uh, March 20th, we're meeting with the town of Amherst to talk about the continuation of the ambulance contract. Uh, early indications is that Amherst will want a whole bunch more money than, than we've been paying. So I'll let you know how that goes. And then the House Ways and Means Committee at the State House is holding meetings uh, through March. I don't think we're going to see their budget until April, pretty much right on top of town meetings. So the state aid figures that we have are the ones that I would run with all the way to town meeting at this point. So the, so Annie mentioned that she was trying to look into that. Yes. And so you don't think we would hear anything back from that for a while? I don't think so. Okay. I think it'll be like a few days before town meeting before we see the next cherry sheet. So I would, okay. make, I would make your planning right now. What Annie was talking about is she can't figure out why the assessments for charter and choice went up as much as they did. She can't tie them back to any demographic shift, which makes intuitive sense because they just don't see the school children moving around from one institution to another. Uh, that would be that kind of increase. So she thinks that the governor just sort of made up the numbers. Can you do that? He can, he's the governor. He can do whatever he wants, oh, right? Oh, we're going to give you 500,000. <laughs> no, let's correct that too. <laughs> And so tomorrow we will all be here at 6 o'clock? 6 okay. o'clock. And we'll be in the, the school superintendent and then all the public safety people. Okay. Does that include the inspectors? Yep. That's right. The, um, the finance committee has been canceled for the 13th, is that correct? Well, I canceled it. I gave you the night off. Yeah. So okay. I don't know if you wanted to do that or not. But. Okay. But I just want to make sure before I do read it from my calendar. No. Once it's gone, what, do you, what do you all think? Yeah, we don't want it. No. Okay. <laughs> there will still be changes between now and then. Right. Yeah. So it's an option. We could still add it yeah. back in. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. I figure tomorrow will be a late night meeting. So I think we're, uh, let's, it starts at 6. Are you three three meeting definitely right here? Yeah. Okay. So I have my elderly mom that I have to take care of. So I will be here, but it will be later. Tomorrow? I take care of her every day. So, but um, yeah, so that's another thing I want to say that I'm not, each meeting is a day by day thing with me. I'm her primary care provider. So as mm -hmm. things go with her, we'll determine if I make it here or not. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, she's fine. Yeah, well, you know, 90. <laughs> She'll be 90 June 12th. God bless her, so. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> 90s and 80s. Okay. So meeting adjourned. Thank you. We're going to be there. Thank you very much, everyone. Watch your tongue. I know. I just.